What's up, guys? In this video, I'm going to be talking about some of the major issues you guys are going to come up against in room acoustics as you're building your music studio. I'm going to talk about some of the major and unfortunate mistakes that a lot of people make the first round through and how to fix those and hopefully save you guys a bunch of time and money. Now, in order to do this, we're going to need to take scientific measurements of the room. I've worked in a bunch of different studios, building them and testing them. I've used a variety of equipment and methods, and by far the system that I like the best and I currently use is by Sonarworks. It's using a kit that includes a specially calibrated room measurement microphone paired with software that not only measures but also can correct the frequency response of your room. There's a direct link to the kit that I'm using in the video, so check that out if you want more info. Now, the room that we're in right now is my professional studio. It's been designed by an acoustician and built using a ton of treatment. Now, this isn't a typical room that you guys would be working in, so what we're going to do is we're going to jet out of the studio, we're going to bounce upstairs in my house to my guest room, rip the furniture out of it, and we're going to use a completely bare, untreated room and start from scratch. All right, you guys ready? Let's do this. All right, guys, so here we are in our test room. And this room is virtually a perfect cube. It's nine feet wide by nine feet long by eight feet tall. And usually you would avoid working in a studio that's shaped like this. But the purpose of this video is to show you how to overcome some of the common problems that you get in a typical room. And this is kind of a typical bedroom. So we're gonna work with what we have here. Now, the number one problem you guys are going to run into is how to orient your room, where to place your mix desk and your mix position. So you can see we have this set up. We've got a regular desk. Our monitors are placed. The first thing you're going to want to do is make sure that you are exactly in between the two side walls. And the reason for that is if you're closer to one side wall than the other, then you're going to be hearing a reflection off the left wall at a different time from the right wall. And that'll really mess up your ability to hear stereo field. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that wherever you're placing your desk, it's exactly at the midway point between your left and your right walls. So in that case, this setup is done correctly. What's wrong with this setup is the fact that we have a window on one side and a regular wall made of drywall on the other. The issue with that is that as sound reflects off of your sidewall boundaries, the materials they're made of is gonna color the sound. And you're gonna get a very different colored reflection off of glass than you are off of drywall. And that means that your perception of stereo field will be skewed. The other problem with this setup is it really prevents you from placing acoustic treatment. Acoustic treatment is typically bolted to drywall using anchors or glued to the wall. And on this side, because we have a window, we can't do that. So this room orientation is one that I would say to totally avoid. Okay, so here we are in our second room orientation that you might think about using with the desk pushed into the corner. Now, the problem with this setup is that base accumulates in corners and you have a gigantic corner right there, right directly in front of you where you're gonna be sitting in the mix position, which would massively skew your perception of low end. Now you might be asking yourselves, the speakers are pointed out, how is bass going to accumulate behind them? And that's because high frequencies emanate from the speaker very directionally, but the lower you get into the frequency spectrum, the more spherical it gets. So when you're down in the bass in the sub range, it's actually just emanating like a big orb and it's going from the speakers behind them, building up in the corner, and then it's gonna reflect back out to you in the mix position. So never ever put your mix desk into a corner, avoid this configuration at all costs. So in this configuration, we have the desk lined up against the front wall. We've eliminated the problem of having the corner behind the monitors and having that base build up. And we've also eliminated the problem of having a window on one side and drywall on the other. We now have identical materials on both sides. Both of them are drywall. We're also at the midway point between the left and the right walls, meaning sound is going to reflect and hit our ears at the same time. And the final advantage is that because we have drywall on both sides, we can now mount acoustic treatment in the primary reflection points. So this is the room setup that I would recommend in this space. 
Now that we've figured out where we're gonna place our mixing desk and mix position, we are gonna get into some acoustic testing. So we'll use the Sonarworks calibrated measurement mic with their reference for testing software, and we're gonna shoot the room to get a baseline for the problems that we're gonna to have to deal with. Let's see what she says. First, let's make sense of this frequency response graph. We've got decibels on the vertical axis and frequency from low to high on the horizontal axis from left to right. Inside this room, we've got a ton of reflections that are made worse by the dimensions of the room. That's what's causing these massive peaks, otherwise known as antinodes, and nulls, known as nodes. The absolute worst room you can possibly be in is a perfect cube that's less than 2,000 square feet in volume. In our case, this room is very small at 9 by 9 by 8 feet, or 648 feet cubed. In small rooms like this, sound has very little time to decay naturally, so reflections are even more problematic. What's worse, this room has a window, and you typically never want to have glass in a studio because it has a super high reflection coefficient. So what you're seeing is huge problems in the low end. We have a peak at around plus 10 dB at just over 100 Hz, and a massive null at nearly negative 12 dB at around 80 Hz. This is caused by something called speaker boundary interference response, where reflections off nearby surfaces like the front and side walls combine with the direct sound a split second later. Looking further up, you can see a variety of problems in the mids, and then things even out a little in the top end. Now this is the main point I want you guys to get. In rooms like that, you have such a hard time judging your low end and getting your mixes to translate. If you were mixing in this room, your ears would tell you to compensate for these peaks and nulls by boosting and cutting frequencies that don't actually need correction. Then, as soon as you listen to your mix in a room that doesn't have these problems, your mix will fall apart and sound either thin or muddy. Mids and highs can be improved quite a bit with acoustic treatment, but the low end is far more of an issue, especially in a small space like this. All right, guys, now we're gonna talk about studio monitor placement and setup. So one of the key factors is how high you place your studio monitors and where your ears should be relative to the speakers. I've heard some people say that the ears should be on the same level as the tweeter, and that's actually dead wrong. Where the ears should be is on the same level as what's called the acoustic axis of the speaker. And that's the midway point between the center of the woofer and the center of the tweeter. So on these speakers, the acoustic axis is more like here. And that's to make sure that the phase of the lows and the mids is the same as the phase from the highs. So everything's hitting your ears at the same time. If your ears are on the same level as the tweeter, it's gonna take a little bit longer for the lows and the mids to hit your ears because they're traveling a slightly longer distance. So make sure first and foremost that your ears are on the same level as the acoustic axis of the speaker. Second, you'll see these are placed on the desk and this is a common mistake that a lot of people make. By putting the speaker on the desk, the acoustic axis is too low and the sweet spot of the speaker is actually gonna be hitting your chest when you're sitting on like a normal chair. So you wanna raise the speakers up couple ways you can do that. One of them is you can use a stand like this, which is made by a company called ISO Acoustics. I've got a link below the video in the description if you guys want to check these out. Basically what this does is you just lift it up, put your monitor on top, it gets it up into that ideal range. The other thing that this does, which is pretty sweet, is it decouples the monitor from the desk. So when the speaker's sitting directly on a surface, it's gonna vibrate that surface. Colored sound is gonna join the dry signal and it's gonna distort your perception of what the monitor's doing. So get it onto a stand like this that's gonna decouple it. Now I see some people with stands, what they're doing is they're angling the monitor like this. And the problem with that is that when you have a monitor that's firing up or firing down, when you're in the mix position, if you lean forwards a little bit or lean backwards just a little bit, you're gonna be way outside the sweet spot. So I always like to have monitors set up firing dead on the level. 
Now, the other way you can handle this, which I actually prefer, is rather than having them sit on the desk, is put them on stands behind the desk. And I've done a lot of research and tested a variety of different types of stands. The stands that I really, really like are made by Ultimate Support, and they're called MS90s. Again, I've got a link in the description of the video. You guys can check those out. Okay, so we've got the monitors up off the desk and placed on the Ultimate Support MS90 stands. Now there's a really big reason why I like doing it and it's because of what happens in the low end. So when you have a monitor that's a little bit in front of your wall, what happens is the base emanates spherically. The dry signal goes towards your ears and then the bounce hits the front wall and then recombines with the dry signal a split second later, causing big phase cancellation, peaks and nulls, and it really distorts your low end frequency response. So by taking your monitors and placing them on stands, you can actually push them right up against the wall. And while it's not gonna counterbalance that completely, it's gonna really improve the low end response of your speakers. And that's why you saw in my room, the speakers are actually mounted flush into the front wall. It's for this reason precisely. Now, a lot of you guys won't be able to do that. It's a complicated and costly room build to build a hard front wall like that. So the best thing you can possibly do is get your speakers on stands, push them right up against the wall. All right guys, the final piece of setting up your studio monitors we're gonna do is configuring them in an equilateral triangle with the mix position. So what you wanna do is measure the distance between your two monitors at the acoustic axis points, and that should form a perfect triangle with a point just a little bit behind the head of the listener. So the point of the triangle is here, which means the axis of the speakers is actually firing and gonna hit the ears perfectly. So we'll measure the distance between these guys right at the axis and that's 50 inches. Now what we're gonna do is measure this way and ensure that 50 inches is actually at the peak behind Aaron's head here. Like so. Perfect. So that's set up nicely. And then the final thing is we're gonna make sure that the monitors are angled in so they're firing on axis right to his ear. So we're just gonna do that visually and get them lined up so that they're pointing directly at Aaron. So how does this one look? Looks good. Good. And looking right at this guy. In just a smidge. Perfect. Great. The next problem I wanna to talk to you guys about is the mixing desk itself. And that can cause a lot of problems that a lot of people aren't aware of. This desk has a keyboard tray underneath it which means that the entire desk surface is much higher than it needs to be. And the issue with that is you get a direct reflection from the monitor speaker off the desk into your ears at the mix position. That's problematic because it causes what's called comb filtering. Comb filtering happens when you take a duplicate of a signal that's almost the same as the original, but it's colored a little bit, and it reaches your ears at almost exactly the same time. And that's really damaging for your perception of mids and highs. So. To prevent that from happening, the best fix is to use a desk that doesn't have a keyboard tray underneath and a desk that's smaller. If this desk was lower or it didn't have this edge here, then the sound would either not reflect off it at all or it would reflect much lower and further back and reflect out kind of below your shoulders. But in this case, if you're dealing with a desk with a keyboard tray and it's this height and you can't do anything about it, there's another fix I wanna share with you and that's Using a small acoustic panel like this, this is a scatter block from Prime Acoustic, one foot by one foot. And all you would do is you would use a mirror when you're sitting in the mix position and slide that mirror until you can see the center of the speaker. And then you slide an acoustic panel and just place it right like that so it's blocking the reflection. So it'll minimize the amount of comb filtering. But if you can get a desk that's much smaller, don't clutter it with equipment, especially when you're mixing, and try and be cognizant of where the path of the speaker's hitting. The final problem and mistake I wanna to talk to you guys about is not using acoustic treatment. I see all the time people spending big money on really fancy monitors and expensive sound cards and plugins, and you just can't hear 
the quality of that equipment or really hear what you're doing properly without acoustic treatment. Now, I'm not gonna throw acoustic treatment in this room. This is my guest room. I'm not gonna mark up the walls by drilling things in. But what I am gonna demonstrate for you guys is the difference between a very live and untreated room like this and a nicely treated, properly dialed room like my studio downstairs. So to do that and demonstrate the difference, we're just gonna use a clap. We'll do it up here and then we'll bounce downstairs. All right, that's a wrap, everybody. In this video, we've covered the major problems that you're gonna run into in home project studios. Number one being your room orientation and setup. We've talked about the fixes for that. We talked next about studio monitor placement and then how to optimize that. We talked about your desk, its size, location, and type. And then we wrapped up with talking about some acoustic treatment to begin to curtail the acoustics in the room and optimize those. Now, as you guys are working on your own rooms and doing this process, which is going to take you some time, you want to make sure that you actually are making the correct decisions. And the only way you're going to be able to do that is by measuring the room scientifically. The kit that I've been using is the one that I use personally and I've used in a bunch of rooms now and I really like is by Sonarworks. And it includes a calibrated room measurement microphone as well as the reference software. The added benefit of this particular setup is that once you're all done with optimizing things as best you can, you can add a layer of correction using the software that will begin to flatten out those final last little bits of the frequency response in the room. There's a direct link to the kit that I'm using in the video, so pop back and check that out. Sweet. So if you guys got a lot out of this video, I'd love it if you hit subscribe to the channel and hit that little notifications bell so you guys get the heads up on all of our future videos. Plus, hit me up in the comments. I'd love to answer and field any questions that you guys have. I've been Vespers. We are Warp Academy. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'll catch you real soon. Whoosh.